Oops. How <laughs> 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 you here? Shall we make a game? Um, yeah, uh, I wasn't planning on switching scene then, just in case that wasn't obvious. It's just I changed window focus and um, <laughs> OBS automatically followed. So uh, yeah, how about that on wrap? Let's, uh... <laughs> Let's sort this out. So we have an ace over here. We have the wrong texture. This is the right one. So at the moment, um, probably not going to get super far with this tonight. We're going to basically try and get more of this unwrapped. Because at the moment, it's, yeah, it's pretty gross looking as an, as an unwrap. So I might make a few more copies of this kind of tower thing. Yeah. So, hang on, I've gone blank. Uh, <laughs> grab the vertex at the bottom. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm just thinking here, I'm just trying to get it into my head how I'm going to make all this work. So I want to move these to here. I did previously have a copy of this here, but then I deleted the copy so I could unwrap these. Just grab the whole thing. That's the whole thing, isn't it? No, we don't want that bit. We just want... We just want that bit. Great. Yeah, so these, this is like a big sort of rail track and then these are pillars holding it up. Um, okay, so we should be able to get a snap, vertex, and closest. Yeah, closest will probably do. And we should be able to then... There we go. Aha! Aha! Is it rotated correctly? It it is. Huh. Oh, it's not quite rotated correctly. It's just close enough. Um, ah, okay. So we need to rotate it like um, that's eight sides of twenty two point five degrees. So yeah, snap the cursor to the middle of there. Ah, span cursor, snap cursor. Ah. Yeah, there we go. And we're going to use the 3D cursor as a rotation point. And then we're going to rotate it very slightly. Actually, can we, can we snap it to say... Ah! Can we snap it to say there? What is that? Is that like two degrees? Just definitely not lining up yet. Um... In fact, how did I model this? What? I wish I hadn't deleted this geometry now because I'm like, why does that quite line up with that? Does that one? Line, yeah, that one lines up with that, but that one doesn't line up with that. Whatever. Let's do the next one. <laughs> okay. So yeah, this is more like what I was expecting, where it needs to be rotated a bit. Okay. So if we snap the cursor to this, and then we grab this entire thing, rotate it around that to there, which is about 11.25 degrees. Okay, that's, does that now line up with that? No, it's still off. I don't know why that's slightly off, but it just is. <laughs> to be honest, you won't be able to see it from the ground level, so who the hell cares? <laughs> oh well. Okay, let's do the same thing here, where we snap the cursor to this. We snap the cruiser to select it. <laughs> and then that's going to be again like 11.25 degrees. Okay. That one actually lines up. So, I don't know, two out of what is that, four? Um, actually, it's pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty bad, but we'll leave it at that. Let's do the next one over here. And then the ones at the ends are gonna be kind of special because half of them is gonna be embedded into a wall. So yeah, we're going for kind of like a sort of a solar punk, solar punk vibe here. So. We're gonna have this sort of base concrete. I'm probably gonna change the color a bit. I can do that quite easily after the fact because it's a sprite. Oh, it's covered up by chat. Let me fix that for you. 
Uh, we've got a palette up here. I might need to move this, see if I can move this palette around actually just so it's not covered by chat. Um, and I can actually edit these in real time if I've got the palette unlocked and the sprite actually updates in real time. So I can kind of like centrally edit all the colors, which is really nice. And the big part of the reason I use the sprite is this is do textures. Um, not really using any in-engine lighting, trying to paint it in as much as possible. And the reason for that is we're going to be putting this in multiple engines. Um, hopefully, eventually, a homegrown engine uh, with a software render written in C. Um, but VRChat is going to be the first target for this. I should probably be careful about promising things like in-engine demonstrations. That's not a great idea, is it? Well, I haven't actually got it walking yet. Wait, is that? Hang on. Why don't those line up? Are they like in the same position? On... Does one of these vertexes stick up slightly? What's going on here? Oh, it does. Huh? <laughs> How did I manage that? Um, we'll pretend that didn't happen and we'll carry on. <laughs> we'll fix that some other time. We won't, we'll forget about it, but we'll tell ourselves we'll fix it some other time. Okay, same trick. We're rotating using the 3D cursor, 20.5. There we go. Does it line up? Hell no, we're off by... Uh, a lot, I guess. <laughs> Snap the cursor to the middle. I make so much use of the 3D cursor. Um, back when I used to use uh, 3DS Max, I, I never found an equivalent to it. And it's such a useful feature, it boggles the mind people could use a 3D editor without one. Okay. That one is very, very off. That one doesn't even come close to lining up. Hmm. So I'm actually tempted to, hmm, should I? I'm wondering, should I adjust this to match the rail track or this to match the rail track? So, or this to match the arch? Or do neither and accept the fact that it'll be off slightly because you won't be able to tell from the ground. I think I'd already agree with myself I was going to do that. So yeah, that's giving us more of an idea of how to look completed. Let me just turn on the uh, statistics if I can remember how you do that. Is it in here? There it is. So yeah, we're already at 720 triangles. Um, oh, not you can see that because I've covered it up with chat. I need to fix that at some point. In fact, maybe on this, <laughs> in case you couldn't tell, I didn't really put a lot of thought into this. Let's move that down there and that down there. We're editing reality in real time. And let's see if we can flip this. Oh, we can. Oh, OBS is so damn good. I just, if you can think of a feature, they put it in. It's so damn good. Um, all right, so yeah, uh, what was I gonna do next? Yeah, more unwrapping, I think. So I am doing it in this like ultra low pixel style. Um, it's like extremely low pixel density. It's about, it's actually about NES density in that it's about, it's somewhere in the region of eight to 16 pixels a meter, which is really low. Um, and that means that even on this, you know, tiny, this is only 256 by 256, the bottom of like a railway bridge, like an entire section of this, occupies a tiny fraction of the entire texture. So we're probably going to fit this entire scene in this. If we don't, not the end of the world. Um, yeah. The background might end up being on its own thing. There's going to be a bit of a cityscape over here and a sort of a sky dome, but that's mostly going to be fairly empty because it's going to be uh, sort of like a... A dusk scene, I guess is the best, best way to describe it. Not nighttime, but not quite a sunset either. Uh, all right, what are we doing next? Uh, okay, let's have a look at these. Yeah, cause like I was saying, we've got a lot of texture space, but we probably shouldn't just straight up waste it. Um, I'm tempted to cut this into, mm, this is this is one of the things you get with like uh, sort of retro stuff. Of course, we don't actually have any real limits because modern computers have so much resource available that, that all this is academic. But do I want to cut this into tiles so that I can use less texture space and tile it? Or 
Do I leave it as one solid piece and paint the whole thing so we can get some really nice looking light? I might do that so we can get the nice kind of, you know, wide tapering, softening shadows. I really want that kind of like really soft look. So yeah, let's, uh, let's unwrap on these. And this is going to be the easiest unwrap job ever. Unwrap. My God, it's done. <laughs> There's your unwrap. <laughs> let's, um, let's square it up. Let's turn on round to quarters. So that way we're using the pixels as a grid. I'm leaving a single pixel between things. Um, the software renderer probably won't need that as it's not going to be floating point, but um, other engines will need that. And it doesn't need to be exact, but we want to get it roughly the same pixel density as everything else. And you know what, that actually looks, that actually doesn't look super far off. Maybe slightly more, particularly that way. Um, we are, of course, taking a non-square surface and ramming it into a square, so it's going to look slightly weird. Like, there's a slight kind of kink in it. I don't know if, if it'll really come through on the stream, but there's a, a visible kind of line along here where the squares on this side and the squares on this side aren't quite aligned, but it's part of the PlayStation 1 look. <laughs> intentionally, intentionally screwing it up. It's not laziness, it's artistic intent. It's quite funny reading um, the the Doom Bible thing, yeah, the the black book on on Doom, and how much um, Carmack was obsessed with fixing um, affine um, texture projection problems. How much he wanted them to be perspective correct, um, and some of the Doom ports had really compromised performance as a result. And today we're like, oh, I want that. It's just you know, it's part of the vibe. Okay, so we want to isolate this area on the texture sheet. Um, I could export the UV islands from Blender and then import them into A-Sprite. I've generally found that to be a massive pain in the ass to do, um, because um, you don't tend to get great pixel precision out of it. And I've generally found that it's just quicker to say, do that, and then reload and just see how it fills. It's just what it needs to be six taller, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And slightly wider, so that'll do probably. Don't show me this again. I can't count. I filled it. And we're, we're a long way off doing like the final pixel work here, so I'm just going to do a rough, very, very, very rough idea of where the shadows are going to fall. So shade the whole thing. And Let's go roughly, say, there. Actually, another thing I can do is I can use the symmetry feature in this. I don't use this as much as I should. It's a really great feature. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna want the shadows to kind of spread out more like that, I think. And then maybe across the top like that. How's that line up? Uh, I think I've not quite lined this up properly. There we go. Because you can put it either on the pixel or you can put it on the edge of the pixel. And I had it on the edge when it should have been on, in the middle. Well, that does imply, I might, hang on. Is this an odd number of pixels? Yes, it's 41 pixels. Let's make it one pixel taller, just so it's, yeah, even. That might seem like I'm just, you know, um, doing something for the sake of, you know, neatness. It doesn't necessarily matter, but when it comes to making it tall nicely and stuff, it will matter. Okay, move that up. Redraw the shadows. So I think it was in there. And then kind of like that. Vaguely like that. How's that look? That's looking vaguely right. I think that shadow needs to be way shorter though, like maybe like that. That's more like it. Yeah, it's almost kind of like the sun is kind of, you know, it's not like right at the, well, not necessarily sun, it's kind of like light bouncing off the atmosphere, but it's, it's not like a sunlight, like all the way up here, like coming straight down. 
but at the same time, it's not like a sun like on the horizon. And you know, it's like it's going to be a very diffuse soft light. You use all these shades up here that you can't see because the oh, <laughs> I need to move the chat in every view. Here we go. One, two, and then flip. Done. Yeah, um, use all these shades to kind of get a bit more sort of diffuse than that. But for now, we're just after getting it roughly right. So let's do the other sections of the ground. This one is going to be a bit tough because um, there's a bit here with radial symmetry and I've got to somehow make that line up and I'm not, not quite sure yet how I'm going to do that. We'll figure it out, but I'm not 100% just yet how I'm going to do it. Uh, I think it's that way. Yeah, there it is. There we go. And it's going to be a bit incorrect that all the shadows are going to be falling kind of like away from the, you know, away from here inwards. But um, we might actually be able to kind of like um, tweak that a little bit just by moving these vertices around just to make the shadows kind of fall one way or the other. So you know, it's almost kind of like all the lights come from, but actually given this meant to be like light bouncing off the atmosphere, probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, it should probably always be coming to outwards in rather than from a specific direction. Okay, next up we do the rest of the railway parts. Oh, this one wrap tool is so good. It's such a fa yeah, it, it's been it's been around since like I think like Blender 2 and it's such a fast way of doing it. I remember um showing sh showing someone who'd been using uh, 3ds Max for like years that you could just grab some polygons and unwrap them nearly perfectly with one click without thinking about it and they were like why are we playing? Why are we paying thousands a year for Autodesk products? <laughs> ah. Again, having the pixel snap makes this dead, dead, dead easy to get consistent with the other, um, with the other islands. Actually, I can also use another feature. I can use is I can use vertex snap. That. That'll probably make it much faster. There might well be an even faster way of doing this, you know, given it's basically a repetitive task, but we're only doing a few here, so this isn't so bad. This is one of the things about a tool like this. It's quite often a really, really neat way of doing something that, you know, allows you to do thousands of the same repetitive task in one click. Doing the research and getting it working though is quite often slower than just doing it the long way. This one is backwards, so let's grab this one and rotate. Oops. That went a bit wrong, didn't it? What's it rotating it around? Oh, it's because I grabbed the whole thing and it, it, it was grabbing the center of all of the UV islands and then rotating them around there, whereas it wants to be around this. Let's make sure that we're on, yeah, we're on medium points. Not individual origins, but rotate each of the individual polygons. Okay, that's looking good. And this one here needs finishing. Bit of a bit of misalignment here, what's going on? Maybe I didn't quite type 180, maybe I typed like 179 or something. One of the things I'm quite curious to do by just, you know, um, streaming and therefore kind of recording this is I really want to get a good idea of just how long these things take because it can be quite, it can be quite hard to keep track of the time when you know, you're sort of say doing a bit of modeling here on the weekend, doing a model, bit of modeling here on the evening, actually having like, you know, say a folder with, I don't know, 10 one hour videos in it will really help kind of gauge how long things are taking. Okay. Next up, let's do a. 
Let's do a rough approximation of the light on that. I want to keep these lines on it just because they're, they're actually part of the, um, they're going to be part of the final sort of product. But let's just make the left side of it really dark. Oops, I still got the symmetry tool on. And how many pixels we have? We've got four done left and left edge. So we want to be five in. One, two, three, four, five. And I think they're all backwards. How did I do that? <laughs> no, wait. No, wait, it is right. Because this is looking at the bottom of it. Yeah, it actually is right. Yeah, I'm going to turn this UV all ends upside down because that's actually really confusing. That, that, that actually is right. It's not mirrored. It's just a bit confusing. And then I'm going to grab all these. And again, it's somehow, some of them haven't quite lined up. They've cut, let me just move that up a bit. Some of them have deviated from the symmetry line. How weird. Anyway. Yeah. Now if we flip this, come back in. There we go. Now we're gonna get a rough again, a rough yeah, this kind of shading here, which just isn't really fair, this just takes kind of a long time to sort out. We just want to get a rough idea of where he's gonna go. So let's have a look here. So these columns are actually at the very top and bottom of the UV island. So it's going to be a bit awkward, but half of the shadow needs to be at the top and half of it needs to be at the bottom. So bearing in mind this bit, these four pixels here are going to be on the sort of, um, not sun, but kind of like, you know, sky facing edge. Let's going to shade those first. And then grab the darkest shade and let's do say that. Something just really, really simple like that. That needs to be bigger, way bigger. I think wider as well, not necessarily much taller. Oh, got camera stuck in some geometry. There we go. Maybe one pixel narrower. One of the things I really like about working with pixel art is that it has a finite resolution. And it means that you, know, you detail up to a point and then you just literally cannot detail anymore. Really kind of keeps um, your know, productivity under check. It stops you going insane and spending just days making a single asset. Okay, that's looking like a shadow. Is that asymmetric? Doesn't, doesn't look like it's quite symmetric. Maybe I've miscounted. No, maybe, oh, hang on. I bet these, um, you know, these pieces of like um, rail bridge are probably not identical. Yeah, yeah, that, that section's slightly longer than that side, so it looks asymmetric even though it's actually not. No one will probably notice when the whole thing's assembled. The important thing is, it looks vaguely right when it's assembled. Okay, so I'm actually going to switch to a different color for the marker lines as they're temporary, they're not meant to be there. Let's give ourselves a nice color that will be obviously, oh, obviously something that you're using for a temporary purpose. I'm going to use another great feature of this. I mean, this is a really common feature for like, um, and not just pixel art editors, but this is in general, but click that, click that, done. Oh, so good. Such a, such a quick way of editing things. So let's really lighten up that side edge quite a lot. Maximum brightness, because it's kind of, you know, to the open sky. That 
Pink is probably going to throw off my uh, perception of colour slightly, but <laughs> we'll work with it. Um, let's go to the... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. Uh, uh, uh. Yep, there's a nice shadow. Let's go one more, I think. And then we can start to put in the deeper shades kind of in here. I think we actually move that more like there. Yeah, it looks about right. Let's go way darker as we reach the middle. Huh. That's actually, that actually looks quite nice. It's just a straight up gradient across the palette. Wouldn't only do a straight gradient, but that actually looks pretty good. It'll probably get adjusted when I come in to detail the edge and make it look a bit more beveled. So one of the things is, because um, I actually have all lighting disabled so I can make it look really consistent across engines. And this, uh, this kind of like color transition here is purely done through textures, right? So like, um, see so this here, which currently has kind of like a flat sort of checker box all over it. It's kind of hard to discern the shape, but when you start putting lighting in it, the shapes start popping out. It also means that you don't have to model things correctly. And I can tell you for a fact, this, this, this character model down in the bottom right corner is not modeled correctly. <laughs> but you can texture around almost any problem. Okay, so let's go for a slightly lighter color under here, like saying that. Let's give that a try. Is that too light? I think that will probably look okay, actually, as long as that's just in the middle and we sort of fade off into a much darker color elsewhere. Let's go one darker and we'll leave that brighter time from just the edge. All right, okay. Let's again go one darker and then start adding a bit of the gradient here. Not looking to go crazy with this. I'm not sure about that. Oops. I think I just uh, reset rotation rather than reloading texture. The, prob the problem with the same keyboard shortcut is just being where you have the mouse when you press the button. Okay, let's grab this. Flip it over. Move the stripe I just drew across it. Ooh, actually, that, 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 that curve looks a bit strange without the stripe over it. Hmm. Actually, it looks okay from that side. Yeah, that side, because I hadn't actually copied the gradient over, looks a bit weird, but this side looks, looks, looks okay. Maybe with a bit of a softer gradient on it. Because um, it's going from a lighter colour up here, there's more kind of steps for it to roll through, whereas here it's going from a darker colour, so it's only, got, it's only got the four shades to roll through. So it, it looks a bit weird that you've got like a high kind of like, you know, a lot of shades here and only a few here. I might have to introduce more colors to the palette. I generally try and keep the color palette small because again, it, you know, it stops you going crazy with it and absolutely drowning it in shades. But quite often eight isn't quite enough. It's a lot easier to add more later though than it is to um, remove them when you realize you don't need them. Did that actually save? Hmm, doesn't show enough, how weird. Anyway, moving on. Um, yes, yeah, so that'll give us a rough idea of what we're going for in terms of like color palette. Next up, let's do some of this rotary, yeah, it's this kind of like radial floor pattern. Um, there is actually a very good reason having the second ring of polygons here. Um, 
it might look like a waste. It's actually going to have a purpose eventually. Um, you know, you probably would not have that in a game of the time. You probably would have just had like a single wedge. You probably also wouldn't have had this many polygons, but who cares? If it looks the part, it looks the part. So I think, I, oh yeah, I did actually unwrap one of these. Yeah, there it is. How's the pixel density on it? That's about right. And let's do the same for the others. And the way I'm going to do this is rather than unwrapping it again and again and again, I'm just going to copy and paste it. Use that brilliant 3D curse tool. And let's do a few of these. We've got a nice 90 degree chunk, so copy, 90, done. Uh, this is going to look a bit weird until it's textured because, um, you know, I'll intentionally texture it so there's no, well, there's a very minimal discontinuity along this, this uh, UV seam, but with the checkerboard on it, they really, really stand out. So lighting wise, um, the skylight in the final scene is going to be way darker than this. This is very kind of like, it's a lot brighter than I intend for it to be. And in fact, most of the scene's light is going to be coming from these kind of hanging sort of lantern things. Um, I was a bit torn because it's meant to be kind of solar punk and originally I wanted kind of hanging baskets but then I was like well, where are the lights going to go? <laughs> so I had to compromise. Instead we're going to have a bit of um, sort of not vines but kind of like you know vegetation hanging off this edge. Which I guess I should probably unwrap now. I've not done a lot of modeling sort of vegetation and stuff so this, this is going to be a bit new to me. This here is not going to be open. This is going to be actually like a, a terminal for the, like a station for the train. So I'm not going to do that just yet. Now, how, how tall, like I'm doing all this in centimeters. How tall should a vine be? I mean, like, I wouldn't say it should be more than a meter. Should we go for 70 centimeters? Oops, I'm rotating it. Oops, don't want to do that. Want to extrude it down. 80 centimeters. That's 80 meters. Okay, 0.8 meters. Right, there we go. That's uh, actually, let's just do a bit more than that because while, while most of them will be about that long, you're gonna want the occasional ones a bit longer. So let's go down another 0.4. Yeah, I mean like, it is also a fancy setting. We do want it exaggerated quite a lot. That also means I'm going to want to texture some of it onto this, so I might actually want to unwrap it so it kind of... Yeah, I'm going to want two sides on it because even though I could do double-sided, um, I want them lit very slightly differently. And what I might do... Yeah, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the inner side be this tall, and I'm going to, have, I'm going to take this outer edge and I'm going to actually separate it out and extend it down. It means you're going to have a discontinuity between, say, this and this, but doesn't really matter. The vertex splits here aren't super important, and yeah, it doesn't really matter. Let's show them back face culling so we can say so we can see which way around this is. How do I do that? We're on the EV renderer here, which probably has a setting for back face culling. I know the um, it's good workbench. Workbench definitely does. Um, although, hang on, ah, it's in here because we're not in render mode. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to flip that because I want this to be the inner face. It's kind of weird how they, yeah, they list it as normals when it actually has nothing to do with normals. It's actually face winding, but I guess most 3D artists would know it as normals, not face winding. Okay, I can't quite grab the edge because it's behind the column, so I'm just going to select them manually. Again, I could work around that, but it's faster just to do it manually sometimes. So we're going to split that, hide everything else, grab the bottom edge, reveal hidden. I can't use the keyboard shortcut because Intel has actually um, made it an unblockable keyboard shortcut for a part of their driver, which is great. <laughs> 
Please fix that soon, Intel. And then we're going to stick it to that. And then we're going to stick it to the height of that. All right, so now we have an outer side and an inner side. And we've actually saved a whole strip of triangles by doing that. We haven't actually saved that much because, again, modern hardware, I mean, you can slow it down by absolutely heaping polygons on it. In practice, like, polygons are very cheap. The vertex splits are more the issue, but, again, doesn't really matter in modern hardware. Okay, so let's go back into the texture. I'm going to have to make some room here if I'm going to be doing this. So let's grab this, move it this way. Um, you may notice here that the checkerboard is actually something I've just drawn. So I'm just going to fill that back in. So what do I want to do with this? Because this is going to need to be flipped. Let's grab this and let's move it that way. When we figure out how tall I think it's going to be, we can put it back around. We can put it right. Reload the texture. That's now broken everything. That's what we expected. The best kind of plan starts with everything's broken. There we go. And then we're going to grab all the right edge, all the, of the sorry, left edges, and we're going to resize it so that our original texture. It doesn't quite fit. Um, I know why. I know exactly why. Um, it's because it's because the size we scaled it to isn't an even multiple of the polygon size. So if we roughly roughly get it right, again, it doesn't have to be exact. It really doesn't. If you just, you know, eyeball it, no one's going to get this close to something that's like three meters off the ground. And it's not, it's not, there's going to be any gaps. As long as the top half is slightly too tall, there's going to be no gaps at all. And let's fix the other side. There we go. Okay. Now we have a nice card we can texture. So I haven't modeled a whole, a whole lot of greenery. This is, um, this is, should we say, kind of new to me. I've done the odd bit of it, but I've not done that much. So how many pixels is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's grab an area. That is ten pixels across. Delete. And now it's a floating black thing. How do I make it transparent? Does Workbench do that? Um, how do I blender? All the outlines on probably turn that off. Um, now here's an annoying thing about the workbench render in Blender. The workbench is the simplest one, and for like doing really retro stuff, it's great. Unfortunately, virtually none of the material options are available for whatever reason. So you have to switch it back to EV, and then you can select the textures that will actually appear. Very strange. I'm not entirely sure why. Viewport display. Nope. Oh, we can put back face coloring on there. Alpha, can we set that from the texture somehow? Hmm. Um. Oh my God, that's a lot of options. Yeah, this. So what? Uh, this is one of the points of contention, really, with things like Blender and Maya and stuff like that. They're not just 3D modeling apps for games. They're also kind of like entire like animation and rendering studios. And that means there's quite often a bit of friction between what you know a, a basic game dev like me is gonna want and what someone making a Pixar movie is gonna want. So whereas I'm just like, I just want a texture with some transparency, it's like, well, you could procedurally generate it in all these ways. And I'm like, I really want to. <laughs> Right, do any of these have something to do with a texture on them? No. And in fact, setting the alpha there does nothing at all in the viewport. Okay. Um, alpha. Just 
straight, I'm going to guess that does something. Because the big black void on the side of it is not really what I want. It's definitely transparent here, isn't it? Yeah, that's definitely transparent. Well, that's it. It's coming through as black on there. Hang on. Let's set the alpha to something else. No, it's still coming through as black for some reason. I wonder if this is a limitation of the Blender TGA importer. Because while the format definitely supports, I mean, it definitely supports um, transparency. That's part of the reason I'm using it. Maybe it doesn't support it in Blender. That'd be kind of weird. Hmm. Yeah, RGB, but um, well, it's got the alpha bit. That it's got the alpha byte there. So, I don't know. I'm just going to Google this. <laughs> um. Hmm. Oh, apparently it might show up in the render view, so let's uh, give that a try. No, it does not show up in the render view. I'll end up in some kind of weird... <laughs> yeah, so EV is kind of like an attempt to, I mean, like, I'm probably dating myself hugely here, but it's an attempt to replicate, like, Marmoset toolbag and things like that, so it gives you kind of like, um, they call it like a, a real-time renderer, and it's sort of like a hybrid between a, um, you know, like a, a nice ray tracer and a game engine. And I'll be honest, I never quite saw the point. You know, people used it to kind of like show off their, you know, their work and stuff. I'm like, if you're going to go to the work, you know, the effort to make it look good in this tool for a portfolio, why not make it look good inside an actual engine? It takes about the same amount of work. And one of them is, you know, real <laughs> one of them is actually inside the game engine and yeah <laughs> that's actually that's, that's actually really impressive part of your um portfolio if it's actually an engine okay let's actually cover the entire side in in vegetation let's make a whole lot more colors of vegetation so yeah i tend to like start off with I tend to start off with, say, eight shades. That tends to be enough. Let's go from, like, really dark. I'm just going to go roughly along the sequence here and make all the different variants of it. And the other thing I tend to do is kind of, like, tend to roll from a slightly warmer color to a kind of cooler color. Yeah, that looks good. So yeah, that's gonna actually, it might be a bit, one of the things that's really hard is like distributing the um, saturation and brightness changes to make it look really good. So I'm gonna sleep, very slightly darken that, very slightly darken that, very slightly darken that. And maybe actually make this one a bit more yellow as well. Okay. So now, we can start to kind of really use this to kind of like give it a bit of depth. Let's go really dark at the edges because that's where it's behind the column. And then work our way out from there. Now this is going to look really weird in the way that it's hard to judge because we've got this dark patch down here. Um, so I might end up actually just temporarily putting a sort of like a medium color in there just so we can get like a rough idea of how it would kind of look against the real background. Most of the path is going to be roughly that color underneath. And then I'll start this side once I've got the shape kind of like decided. 
So I actually wanted to look kind of like um, sort of like bushes and stuff, you know, um, not not like vines because vines and oh, how, how am I going to make this look like leaves and bushes and stuff? How am I going to do that? It's like um, when I was doing like a pencil sketch of it, I actually found that doing like a motion like that because it kind of like gave it that kind of undulation of the leaves sticking out. But I don't think we quite have enough pixels for that here. Hmm. And also when it comes to shading, because obviously like, you know, I can make it look like vines or making the light kind of run along it. How do I do that with leaves? On this side, it's not going to matter so much, but on the other side, I'm probably going to want it to be lighter around the edges just to kind of make it look like it's being, you know, you get that effect where because it's um, thinner at the edges, uh, more light transmits through. But on this side, you're actually going to want it to be the opposite way around. You're going to want it to be darker at the edges because they're kind of faced away from the sun slightly. I think. Am I talking rubbish? I'm probably talking rubbish. Maybe we can't make it look like there's individual leaves by kind of like having them kind of like highlight highlighted at the edge and then kind of like shadow underneath them. Yeah, let's just draw a bunch of pixels and see what happens. How's that look? Oops, I did it again. That doesn't look great. <laughs> that does not look great. Okay, let's have a... Um... Hanging bush, let's have a look. Let's do a bit of Google research here. I probably should have made a scene for Firefox so you can see when I'm doing research or I'm looking at, although well, maybe that would be incriminating, I don't know. Yeah, it's just green. <laughs> right, so it it's actually kind of like a hybrid of the two approaches. So you do kind of have kind of like, you know, a run down, but then like, um, but then you have kind of like sort of dappling on the edges of it. So let's grab all of that. Let's blanket that again and let's darken it. And then go for kind of like a rundown sort of like that. It's kind of like a sort of like a branch or a vine, I guess, with the leaves hanging off it. And we're going to pepper it with like lighter leaves down the edges as the sunlight catches them. Maybe start to darken in the middle and then go darker underneath as it's casting a shadow on the leaves and the leaf. Does that look better? No, that doesn't look better. <laughs> this might take a few attempts to get right. Let's copy this up to the other end just so we've got kind of like a bit of continuity between two halves. Did I correct the UVs on the floor? No, I didn't. Let's get that in there. Yep, um, let's unwrap this as well. Oh, wait, wait, I've selected the wrong side of it. Oops. Ah, there we go. Now I've got the right side. Ah, I didn't unwrap these first. That's fine, that's fine. We'll sort it. Do I want a vine over this part? I'm thinking probably not, given there's not meant to be an overhang for it to actually be hanging over. It'll have its own texture anyway, even if I do it, because um, because it won't be backlit by the sun. So, unwrap. Did that, did that unwrap? Unwrap, there we go. And then we're gonna use checker deselect. Are we? Wait, hang on. Oh, I guess it's not available in the UV view. It basically does that, which is really neat. It means that it deselects every second one. Now let's do it by hand. Rip, move. Oh, I can use the snap tool. Yeah, I can use the snap tool. Oh, they're all different lengths because the uh, spacing's not even. 
and grab these. I just want the vertices actually. I don't want to scale the outer edge, this side edge, it's just the top edges. Scale zero. Grab the lot of them. And that, yeah, that's, that's got us the right size. Now we move it onto its own patch because it's going to look very slightly different. And then select everything. Do the same for this, move it to there. Let me just check that I didn't break the uh, unwrap because I noticed it wasn't uh, moving very evenly. Okay, grab this entire side, put you there, grab all this, put you there. Done. Now I need to flip one side of this, so I'm going to flip this side. Actually, no, I don't. I don't need to flip it. I just flip the texture. There we go. So yeah, that kind of like vines on both. That kind of like vine is on both sides. It might look less weird once I've textured the whole. Once I've done the whole run, to be honest, it probably only looks weird because it's like one, <laughs> one bunch of um, one bunch of leaves on the entire thing. The rest of it's just green paint. Oh yeah, I'm also going to have to take into account when I'm texturing the edge of this. So there's a bit of a shadow wherever there's leaves. Okay. Next up, let's sort these out because I broke these UVs by moving the ones around them around. Job done. Okay. What's next? What's next? Oh yeah. I was going to start doing a rough bit of this here. So again, I don't really know where these are on the texture. I'm just going to kind of guess. Yeah, I've kind of put them there because this this here is the unwrap for this thing. So I kind of put it up there because it seems like a good space for it. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, who knows. So let's put a big splotch of paint, say, there. Close enough. <laughs> That's made a really weird, interesting pattern. I wonder if I should do some, I could do like an interesting tiled floor or something. But no, that wasn't, that's not the vision. Okay, looking good. And let me just select out the bits I want. All right. Some of these are unwrapped very strangely, but that's fine. So yeah, let's fill the rest of this in. So I'm gonna go up two more and across some of that. Oops, I put the line tool selected. I forgot about that. Clear all this out. I don't need these checkers anymore because we've used them. To be honest, I could have used the built-in like blender um, unwrap tools to you know, sort those out. Oh, well, I, can't, I can't leave them transparent because they go kind of like strange. Yeah, Blender has the ability to uh, generate textures specifically designed from wrapping, so they have um, a nice grid on them. I'm not using those. I'm a maverick. Okay. You know what? I could be using that symmetry tool again, couldn't I? It's getting better at remembering to use that. So yeah, we're going up by four, across by one, up by four. 
And then grab the square tool. Okay, now we've covered the whole thing and we can reveal hidden. It's be a good time to save, so I'm just gonna do that. Why is it never remember in these settings? Maybe I should maybe I should actually save these. Save as useful. Yeah, so I'm saving directly to OBJ. The reason for that is um, it's going to be dead easy to write an importer for that into a custom engine. And um, it also source controls really nicely, which Blender files don't. So I'm having a bit of a problem at the moment where the camera centers ended up over here. So I just, just select some geometry that I want to center on. View selected. Recenters the camera and whatever we have selected. So I'm after kind of like a um, kind of like circles of cobblestones. So let's see how it looks if we just do that. So that gives us like a rough, yeah, rough circle. How far apart do we want these spaced? I don't have like a reference model in here for the size of a character, but that's about a meter across there. So that's pretty big but they are also sprites. They are going to be pretty chunky. I'm going to try and like make these like when it's finished relatively faint, just so it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't give you a headache looking at it. <laughs> the irony of saying that while having like magenta stripes on the ceiling. Okay, let's start putting in the odd bit of tiling. Uh, here's something annoying because I've got like, yeah, no center pixel, it's like an even number of pixels. I don't have a center one. Can I do that? Is that gonna look good? That's gonna look okay. Now I could and probably should be using layers to be able to like um, capture this stuff. But um, I found myself like much preferring the simplicity of only having one layer. It's a lot harder to, I just found myself accidentally drawing on the wrong layer all the time. And then all that stuff just stopped when I stopped using layers. So I guess I don't use layers anymore. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'm probably gonna to want to keep this bit here like really subtle in terms of lighting because it's gonna look a bit weird having like the bricks that close together. Let's turn off the symmetry because we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be working off grid a bit here. How's that look? Terrible. <laughs> uh, oops, how's that look? Less terrible. That doesn't look awful. You know, it's gonna be way more subtle than that, so that isn't gonna look completely terrible. Again, though, I'm not quite sure what to do here because I've kind of gone off-grid a bit. Let's delete the off-grid stuff and just see how well I think we can, see how well we can make everything fit. Because I kind of want to stick to the grid. I'm probably also going to make a variant of this texture for here, just have a bit more shadow on it. Let's grab all of the pieces. Yeah. Um, so obviously I'm gonna you know, use the same texture on each part of this. Um, I'm gonna have it lit from above. This light isn't actually right over it, I don't really care. <laughs> Be close enough. Stop thinking so hard about things that don't matter. Um, okay, so again, let's go for magenta on this just because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the color of this. And then let's just do a very, very, very rough gradient. Very rough.
Whoa! Whoa! Okay, um, that's actually not looking terrible. Um, I'm just going to fix the middle one because it's kind of throwing the whole cover balance. So it actually looks okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to look even remotely okay, but it actually looks okay. Um, yeah. Okay, um, let's make these a bit more, yeah, let's make these kind of like tiles a bit more sort of natural looking. So we're going to have kind of like, yeah, kind of like a bit of shadow on the back of it. It's almost kind of like, you know, they're physically casting shadows. There we go. Hey, 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 hey. That's starting to look not utter garbage. Hell yeah. It's a bit weird looking in the middle, but you know what? I'm happy. Oh, actually, what if I just flatten the middle of it slightly like that? And then had it say, you gradually go for a gradient, kind of like that, and kind of like it just kind of looks like it's you know washed out slightly due to the like massively overpowerful light on top of it. That actually looks better. I'm happy with that. I'll do something with this when I've got more of an idea of what I'm doing with it. But yeah, let's continue this kind of like you know gradienting. Hey, yeah. Uh, I, I might shift the scene slightly to make the light line up because now I'm actually looking at it. I'm like, it does look really odd that there's a light source that's like nearly a full meter misaligned from the light from what it's lighting up. Thinking about, it, I'm also gonna need a variant of the texture for when it's kind of like near this window as well. Well, not window, but kind of like bay. It's just as room for light to come in. I might be able to get rid of these extra polygons around the edge if I'm gonna be doing that. Okay, let's finish this up. I uh, probably want this to only be single, pix single pixel wide. How's that look? That looks all right. That looks okay. Yeah, I'm probably going to make these like way, way, way darker a bit later on when I've got more, um, got more of a texture. And you kind of like see like what, what the impact of like making a tiny um, palette changes to the whole scene at once. That's one of the things about colors. They're so kind of subjective and so kind of, um, you know, how, how, how we perceive colors is affected so much by how they're staged against other colors. It's almost impossible to pick colors until you have the full context. Yeah, I'm probably going to need some darker shades just to kind of, or maybe, I, maybe I'm just grading it. Maybe, maybe I need, um, need to. Make this lighter patch extend a bit further up. Yeah, let's do that. That's more like it. That's more like it. And because like the um, the kind of like gaps between the bricks are not very well shaded here, you kind of get like an overbright look. Like it kind of like makes it look like you know the light is blooming out. It's a it's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, that, that was, I, I am, I'm liking that. <laughs> I'm really happy for how that came out. <laughs> Yeah, this hasn't gone so well, but this has. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do a variant of it that is kind of like suitable for being pushed up against this wall. So let's grab this. And then maybe also a variant of it to kind of like capture some of the sort of shading around this corner. We're going to have a lot of different versions of this one the texture, to be honest. Um, Let's see the whole unwrap so we can see where our gaps are. Can we fit this anywhere nice? We'll probably put it there. Yeah. I try and avoid like, yeah, really micro optimizing unwraps from the beginning because, um, you, know, you, you then need to like move something and you're like, oh God, I have to move the whole model around to like, make this one tiny adjustment. But I think that's pretty justified. It fits nicely in there. So yeah, it's up to this kind of T-junction. So I think it's that much. And we're gonna flip it both ways. Ah, it's not transparent because um, it's on a, uh... right, okay. It's not, it's not on the transparent background, it's on a checkerboard background. So when I copy and paste it, it's included in the checkerboard. Layers would probably have helped me there. They would probably have helped me there. But I'm not using layers. I think that's about right. Let's have a look. Nope, it's too far that way. There we go. Okay, so we successfully made it look the same. <laughs> now we can make it way darker along the search. So maybe more like... Oops. I ran off the end there. Um... Yeah, way darker. And then you put that into the scene. Yeah, it kind of looks like, um, you know, it's got a bit of sort of, I guess what we call ambient occlusion in the corner. Again, it's gonna look kind of strange because I haven't made kind of like versions to kind of like roll, roll off that shadow around here. But that should look really good when it's done. I've been doing this an hour, damn, that went fast. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, let's make one. Oh, I've, I've got this weird sort of black stair, um, stair step thing due to the um, due to the fact that um, I've got transparent pixels there. Let's make a variant of it for here. Again, let's let's try and pack it in there. I've still got yeah, I've still got the paste buffer. Good. Okay, and then, oops, if I grab the right window, I can grab, say, say roughly those pixels. Turn them upside down and put them roughly there. And then we should get, yeah, we should get a kind of like weird light roll off. So now I wanna kind of like lighten these up a bit and really make it kind of look like there's a bit of shadow coming off the corner. So those two colors are already right next to each other. So I'm just gonna go for a slightly brighter one there. Actually that mirror brick is weirdly flat. I should probably do something with that. Yeah, this one. There we go, that looks way better. Oh man, I'm glad I noticed that. Darker there. Ah, oh, yeah. 
So again, we're going to be grabbing this and this. And we're going to be blending it from one to the other. Maybe it needs to come across slightly less than that. Ah, I've actually ended up accidentally making it slightly lighter than the uh, the bright tile. Hmm. Let's copy some more pixels from the original. Um, this one. Let's make it more like that many. Okay, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. It's nice and subtle. That's what I wanted. Um, maybe just shade these two pixels in, just because they're a bit too light. And then... Hang on, my eyes are getting a bit funny looking at all these pixels. Um, we have like a bright patch here. Ah, this one here and this one here needs to go a bit darker. And maybe that one too. Oh, that's, that's actually getting a bit too dark in the corner. Getting darker than the, uh, the actual shaded tile. All right, that looks good. That looks, um, there's no longer, you know, it might look a bit strange because I'm, I'm maybe down with enough um, graduation levels in the palette, but it looks way less jarring than that edge. So I think that could do with a bit more adjustment, but like that's pretty close to looking good. Let me just um, eyeball this. Yeah, let's lighten that pixel and also darken this one. Slightly. This is the thing I was trying to avoid doing with the rest of the uh, the rest of the texture. It's like hours and hours and hours shuffling the same pixel backwards and forwards, going mm, too bright, too dark, <laughs> too bright, too dark. I can actually do with adjusting this because this is kind of um, this looks too bright. Ah, you can actually kind of see it on 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 here. Sometimes you can only see it in context. I can definitely see it out of context right here. So let's darken that, darken that. How's that look? That looks pretty good. Um, I might be tempted to just lighten up some of this here just a touch. Yeah, so you get that still kind of softer roll off across the whole thing. And I'm just gonna shade in the old patch here just to make it like a bit half and half. Oh, that doesn't look good. No, don't do that, don't do that. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I've got to give... So I'm probably getting just about done for today. It's getting a bit late. But tomorrow, I really need to give this sort of um, vine here a, a real good um, retry because that, that didn't come out great. Well, some progress was made. Yeah, definitely starting to see more of the scene flesh out a bit. Thank you very much for watching. I don't, I don't know how often I'm going to do this. I feel like every night would be too much on top of games. Maybe just every night where I'm 3D modeling and texturing, I just happen to stream it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow at 7pm for Code Veronica.